we go to town to town and people are like, oh, you guys are famous wrestlers, but like sometimes, you know, nobody even knows who we are. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a weird line of fame. Well, back in that day, too, in South Africa, uh, if, if you have your national colors in any sport, you're pretty well known, you know. And uh, my dad was like the, the the captain of the team, the the wrestling team, and they were gonna go to, like I said, the Olympics, but they were boycotted, and you know. And uh, the Russian guy who won the silver medal, my dad actually beat him at the World Champions later. So my dad was like, "Man, I could have beat this guy." And you know, my dad, my dad was a lawyer, but he uh, he refused to wear a suit, so he started a sports promotions company, which led him to start the wrestling company and. Yeah, long story. And fa fa like, is he ever getting recognized outside when you're walking around? Oh yeah, all the time, man. Okay. He was on. He was on. Like, he was clever. Like, he was like the the cocky heel, the Pink Panther. Mm -hmm. He would never go over. He was never one of those guys who would, uh, you know, win the belt to all the championships at, at his own company or anywhere else. But he would always have the most heat and just be the biggest dick. And he would do be if there was an, a TV interview, he would be on it. If there was like some breakfast show wanting to interview a wrestler, he was the guy. You're right. You know, like he was just people were just fascinated with his his aura and his his, his character. What did uh, the Pink Panther wear? Pink, a lot of pink. Uh, he had he drove a pink Porsche. <laughs> Our house was pink. Dude. Come on, I swear. Living the like Shane Douglas style. Just it was it was yellow <laughs> and black. <laughs> we lived in a castle too, so it was three stories and then like oh all the sympathy imagine, like, I have for you. Live it. You lived in a castle. That, that was my dad. Like my my mom. We were very poor. Uh, <laughs> my dad was just he was a fucking rock star. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold seven, on. Seven bedrooms. Like we didn't know what to do with all these bedrooms. So your when the divorce happened, your mom's kind of was poor. Yeah, and your dad had a castle and was rich, or tried to pretend like he was rich. He, you know, I never know. Like uh, he was probably pretending to be rich. I mean, he had a little bit of money, but he made some bad mistakes and in investments. And I know that that one day he had nothing, and then the next day he he was like, "Hey, you want some money?" And then you know, S still an enigma to this day. Still, an enigma. or you? I mean, you haven't really dug into it. He was a total enigma. You know, I found a room in his house with bunch of fake passports and guns and Ooh. i was like who what is going on here like and what you were young i was young i didn't understand it i was kind of like just act like i didn't see it and i kind of stayed away from it and, and you've never even like no i remember being a kid too and he uh, he never gave me a hiding you know like back in the day that was you used to spank your kids and stuff and my mom was like oh I'll give him a hiding i don't know what he did wrong but whatever my dad would never he would grab me on my shoulder or my arm or my hand and he would just grab a nerve like a pressure point and my whole body would go numb and i would just lie on the floor and be like ah what is happening right now like shit like that all the time and i was like fuck what are, who are you yeah i think you need to like <laughs> do you think about like going back and doing like an investig not an investigation but like getting the bottom of all the stuff you don't know you know here's another story so when I moved in with him, I was on the road full time for two years. Uh, two, a sixteen year old wrestler. Sixteen year old wrestler. But going to high school and yeah, going, going to, to school. So I'd, I'd, my coach would come pick me up Friday at school with my my gear bag already packed. We would drive the ten, eleven hours sometimes to go do the show. Drive six hours back, do another show, get me back for school. Homework was never done. Bruises everywhere. You know, <laughs> people were like, "What do you do?" And I was like, Phew. "Yeah, you know." rough weekend <laughs> well, and you had to keep it quiet yeah from yeah. everyone yeah i couldn't never tell anybody nobody at school knew you were a wrestler nobody nobody knew girlfriends i hardly had any because i didn't have time because on weekends i would be wrestling and in the week i'd play rugby and trying to get my homework done and shit like that um where was i oh sorry a story about investigating oh yeah, yeah. so uh <laughs> so when i was 18 just about to finish school uh my dad got shot in the head, right in front of me, uh, something a, a child should never see. But like my whole world just crashed, you know, like I didn't know what to do. Everyone expected me to take over the company, which I, I couldn't. I was 18. I don't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I just uh, I had this conversation with him probably about six months earlier that I was going to quit school because I was going to become a wrestler because he was going to send me to Japan for like six months because he had all the contacts and then sent me to germany you know he had all the contacts do you there. remember like, what japan contact was i have no idea i do remember the guy in germany's name because uh his name was dave morgan i don't know if you know that name at all mm. he was one of those connie wrestlers that you know back in the day where the where the, the guy in the ring challenges anybody yes. and he would just 
fucking you know make them tap within 10 seconds mm -hmm. and i he he basically he trained my dad a lot and my dad used to bring him out all the time to train the new talent and he was like 58 years old he had, he would he would come into the ring with a cigarette and he would just out wrestle 20 guys and go for like two hours it's the toughest fucking a tough tough guy but a real carny mm -hmm. like, perfect <laughs> so yeah when my dad got shot like i uh i didn't know what to do everyone was like take over the company but I, I told him that uh when we had this conversation i was like uh, i'm gonna drop out of school and he goes no and then you're gonna pay rent you have to finish school so i was like but i'm gonna become a wrestler anyway just send me to germany now he's like no if you're gonna finish school so i promised him that i'd finish school so the day he got shot i was in my final exams like i probably had like four or five things to write and since i promised him i finished it but once i finished man i was just i was destroyed so i packed a little backpack left the country didn't tell my family didn't tell anybody uh, i don't even know what happened to the company i just i went to england and i started backpacking through england mm. you know for four years didn't watch wrestling didn't do anything like i didn't want anything to do with wrestling and no contact with your mom or yeah, nobody nobody i just just was there like was, a missing thing on you or i was i was trying maybe probably you know i was i was just trying to you know, I was doing some soul searching, trying to figure out what I need to do in life. And, you know, I started ending up working at a hotel and then at a restaurant, you know, I like to pay the bills and blah, blah, blah. Eventually, I was like, man, I need to, you know, maybe I should go to college and get a degree and, you know, so I can, you know, be something. Mm. I, I ended up studying in, in London, got two degrees, got my master's, which made my mom very happy later on in life. Uh, but I remember I heard I was, I was walking in the in the in this area and i heard bumping in this hole and i i don't know why but i just walked in and as i walked in aj styles wrestled johnny storm and i was just like holy shit i started training the next day again this was after four years and you didn't know who aj or johnny was no idea who they right, were. right but they're obviously good the, the match was phenomenal yeah. like i just stood by the entrance where i couldn't even like where walk. what what building where that was in bethnal green in uh you've probably wrestled yeah there. i wonder if i was on the show no you were there a year later you wrestled punk uh, i think punk a year, so year that was, yeah that later. fwa show this yes yeah 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 super i don't know if super S or no. yeah something like that yes yeah. yes i remember that because i was there so, so then i started going to all the shows mm. trying to speak to like who hey where do i go train what do i do uh, hooked up with alex shane mm -hmm. <laughs> and he sent me to the fwa school and i started training again and uh it wasn't like riding a bike like taking bumps and hitting the ropes after four years yeah. it was like learning from scratch well what was so uh, so you put yourself through school while in london mm -hmm. right i mean it was kind of you started from scratch yeah yeah scratch like like i ended up like talking to my mom here and there i would send her an email just so she would know i was okay and she was like i'll pay for your studies and i knew if she paid for it then i would never have gone so i was like i'll do it myself right you know? <laughs> i understand yeah so like i just worked like five six jobs worked my ass off trying to wrestle on weekends and then well but i'm, I'm kind of interested in the I know it's the wrestling podcast, but th like for the four years, like did you, did you find, like I get it, you like soul search backpack, like did you find an answer that you were looking for or anything? Well, I I kind of figured that that when I walked in there and that, that feeling I got from watching like AJ and I walked in as they did this opening spot and like AJ did this like fucking springboard backflip thing and I was just like, I was like, whoa, this is how much wrestling has evolved because I don't know anything about indie wrestling too when, back back then, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, it was probably just like shitty headlocks and stuff in yeah, South Africa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like. And then I was just like, "Wow, is this what it's evolved to? This is I can I can do flips and shit. Mm -hmm. So I just need to learn how yeah, to get in here. It's somehow. kind of lucky how also like those two are like the top top profession. You know, like imagine you walked in and some shitty dudes. Uh, you I know, know, I know. I would have walked right out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of like my 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 sign. I think 